Hello, Blake Rudis here with Everyday HDR and HDRinsider.com, and today I'm going to talk about the Lighten Blend Mode. Okay, so there's a lot of crazy things you can do with the Lighten Blend Mode if you know exactly what you're doing with the Lighten Blend Mode. So I'm going to show you uh, how you can stack multiple images, and when I'm talking multiple, with this one we're looking at nine different photos. So we can make uh, this image go from you know just one photo like this to something like this. So this one is the light and blend mode and the sea of a million waves. Uh, kind of sounds like a Harry Potter movie title. Anyway, let's go. Okay, so there's a couple things we have to do in order to get all of these images to uh, be stacked on top of each other so that we can use this light and blend mode to our benefit. Uh, so what you're looking at here is we're gonna start this whole journey off in Bridge. So I'm in here in Bridge, I navigated to the folder that I wanted to go to that's got all of the images in it to create my final piece. So you'll see that there's a series of images in here uh, all from the same shoot that one day. Very, very interesting place to shoot. This is Indian Beach. Uh, off in the distance there, you can see Tillamook Lighthouse. So you'll see here that I have what looks like a box around it, and then it says six. What that's telling me is that this is a stack of six images. So I can open up that series of images, and I can see that entire stack. So what we want to do is we want to take uh, a series of photos that all have the same shot, essentially. So the way this image was set up is I was on a tripod, had a large zoom lens on the front, and uh, I was zoomed out all the way to Tillamook Lighthouse in the back there. So with that being my focal point, I just took a series of shots as the waves were coming in. So here's the first shot, second shot, third shot, fourth shot, fifth shot, sixth shot, seventh shot, eighth shot, ninth shot, and then we move on to a different composition because maybe the wind blew and uh, <laughs> my, my hand went off in a different direction. So in order to do this, you need to have several images. This is the same that you would do for something like a lightning uh, image or um, one with um, the star trails, same exact concept here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put all of these in a stack. So we do that by selecting this one and then navigating to the last one that's the same image. So now I've got all these in, in the same selection and bridge. I'm gonna right click on them and I'm going to say stack and group as stack. So now you can see that I have a stack of photos here. If you go into that stack, you can also ungroup them from the stack if you need to ungroup them as well. We're gonna keep them grouped. So go back to that stack and group them up. So now you'll see here that I've got one image. If I can select the bottom one, it's gonna show me all of the nine images that are in here. And if I double click right there, it's gonna open all of them in Adobe Camera Raw. And that's what I wanna do. First things first, open them in Adobe Camera Raw. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this image to look like I want it to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm basically gonna hit auto for this, just at the beginning, maybe uh, do some adjustments here, just some quick adjustments, cause I'm not taking too long on this. I wanna show you more about the stuff in Photoshop, but I wanna get this looking just right so that my whites are whites, my blacks are blacks, and I've got an interesting looking uh, photo. When I do that, I'm gonna select this image, and I'm gonna scroll all the way down to this image impression, hold shift, and then I'm gonna right click and say sync settings. And it's asking, what do I wanna sync? Well, I wanna sync all of these. The reason why I wanna do this, I want all of these images to appear the exact same way so that we bring them into Photoshop to do our layered stack. They'll all have the same uh, dynamic range in all of the photos. So they look pretty good there. I like what's going on here. Now, I don't wanna say open image. I wanna say done. So then when we go back into bridge, you'll see that we still have our stack here. Now all of them should all have the settings that I had from Adobe Camera Raw. So if I click on the bottom of that stack again, now they all have the exact same settings from Adobe Camera Raw. So with all of them selected, I'm gonna go to tools and then down here, go to Photoshop and go to load files into Photoshop layers. So this is going to take me into Photoshop and it's going to take all nine of those images and stack them on top of each other for me into one file so that they're all loaded up on the same uh, image, essentially. So it's, it's one image that's got nine different layers and every one of those layers is the images that I was working with. This is a really critical step here. You don't want to have to do this by yourself. So that's why Bridge is almost essential for this. Uh, Bridge can allow you to open things in Adobe Camera Raw. Uh, right from Bridge, edit them in Adobe Camera Raw, and then open them right into Photoshop. Very similar to what you could do in Lightroom, but for those of us who don't use Lightroom, this is our workflow. 
So now we have all of these images on top of each other. And now what I want to do is select the top one and select the bottom one, press and hold shift. And I'm going to go and press the V for the move tool or this tool over here in the upper left hand corner and click right here. This icon right here is going to be auto align layers. So we want Photoshop to automatically align all of these layers. And what Photoshop is going to do when we press OK is it's going to align them based off of a standard set of pixels that all look the same in the image, which in this case, luckily, we have that lighthouse there to be our standard set of pixels that's the same in all of the images. So the waves are going to change and that's it's fine that the waves change, but it's going to stack itself based off of this lighthouse up here. And we can always double check that we can change this to difference to make sure that we don't have anything there. When this is set to difference, everything should turn black unless it's misaligned. When it's misaligned, you'll see the misalignment. But as soon as it turns all black, which it was right out of Photoshop's auto align layers, then everything's OK. You can double check all of those if you want to. But I've already done this beforehand and found out that this does work out pretty well. If by chance you hit the light and blend mode and things don't look right, find the one that's off, set that to difference and make sure that it all goes to black where those areas line up. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this look like the sea of a million waves. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and click on the top one and click on just above the bottom one. The bottom one is going to be our base image that everything else is going to work off of. So now if I change the blend option to lighten, boom, look what happens. We now have a sea of a million waves. What's happening here is the light and blend mode is allowing everything that's white on these series of images to come through onto our bottom layer. So let's look at a visual of this. I'm going to go ahead and press alt on this eyeball and click there. I'm going to create a new layer and with that new layer, I'm going to get my brush tool. I'm going to press B for brush. And then I'm going to have my colors defaulted by clicking on this item here to black and white. So I'm going to paint with black right here. Press X to switch them over or switch them over manually if it, the button doesn't work. And I've got a nice black and white image going on here on top of my photo. And you're like, what are you doing, Blake? I'm going to show you what this light and blend mode does. When I change this to lighten, watch what happens. The only thing that's left over from the blend that I'm working with is white areas that are white. Now we do have what looks like the area right here on the top of this uh, being a little bit of a purplish color, which that may happen in the process of you using the light mode. But what's happening is if the area is more white than the area that you're putting it on, it will allow the white to come through and everything else to be pushed off to the side. Um, that's kind of the the idea behind it. That's why when you use the light and blend mode with lightning, well, all the lightning streaks end up in the sky and everything looks relatively well. And if you use the light and blend mode with star trails, well, then all of the beams of all the little star trails end up creating that circular effect because they're stacking on top of each other just where those lighter areas are. So the only thing that's coming through is the lighter area. That's why when we turn this eyeball on, we're starting to see the waves that are lighter in this image than the waves that are lighter in the image before. They're all stacking on top of each other, stacking on top, stacking on top, stacking on top. See, see, see how this is working here. Now we have uh, a million waves kind of all crashing at the same time. It's actually probably only like three or four waves, but it looks like this giant epic scene of a ton of waves kind of crashing in. Looking at this, I don't really like how much of those waves are crashing all over the place. So now is the time where you can kind of go through and say, okay, well, do I want this one on here? Does it help? Does it add to it? Well, does this one help? Does it add to it? I kind of like the splash that's coming up on that one. But let's say this one doesn't add too much to it. So I'll just take that one away and I'll unclick this one, take that one away. And that one, I really like that one. I'm going to leave that one there. Don't necessarily need that one. I don't necessarily need that one. And that one looks all right. Let's see this one again and this one again. So you can see as these stack up, we start to see where all the waves are coming through. And we can we can even now go into these even further and say, well, I like how much of the, the wave we have coming down here. So maybe I can just make a mask on this and brush with black to bring some of those areas back. I just really just want the waves crashing up on the rocks from that one and not all the waves down here. Same thing for this one. What happens if I take some of this one away? Well, I'll just borrow this mask. I'll press alter option on this mask and drag it right up to this one. So I'm borrowing that mask. 
Maybe I'll do the same for this one up here, alter option and drag that up. So now it looks like we have a series of waves uh, that are in the background crashing up on the rocks, but we have this multi-layer depth going on in the image. And maybe if we wanted to add some more of these at this point, we could, and just kind of see where we're going with this. I, I kind of like the direction that this has gone so far. I can probably just leave it at this. Now, of course, now we've got the stack of images. This is what I want to work with. So what I can do is I can press Control Shift Alt and E, and that's going to make a stamp of everything that's visible down here. So I can either delete these or I can put them in their own group by pressing Control G. So when they're in their own group, I'm now not editing those and I can work on this image further. I'd probably do some texturing on this one or something, something to bring about some more interest in this, this photo rather than uh, just a bunch of waves here crashing by the, uh, the lighthouse. But we can also go into the crop tool, use the straighten item here and just straighten this one out. So the big takeaway here is that light and blend mode is that the light and blend mode can be used to allow the lighter areas of one image to come through onto another one. So in this one, we made the sea of a million waves, but we could also do this with lightning photos. We could do this with star trail photos, you name it. The options are out there for you. Even light painting. If you're doing a bunch of light painting, you can stack all those light painting layers on top of each other, press the light and blend mode and watch how all the lighter objects come through onto that bottom object. Now, as we see in this stack here, you have to make sure that the bottom layer is set to uh, normal. Okay, so if that's not set to normal, I think all, all things are gonna just kind of go away and it's gonna look like this. Um, maybe even find which one you want to be your base image. Maybe I want this one to be my base image as the, the normal layer on the bottom and not the light and layer. It's all up to you and it's all, the possibilities are literally endless on how you could arrange these layers to get the most dynamic looking uh, final result. So instead of having just uh, one image like this one, we now have all of these having some say in what the final photo is going to look like. So think of ways you can use the light and blend mode, many possibilities out there. Again, my name is Blake Rudis with Everyday HDR and HDRinsider.com. And this was how you use the light and blend mode. Share it, like it, comment on it, and uh, tell a friend about it because, you know, um, everyone could benefit from a little bit of knowledge today. Thanks very much for watching.